cut them. Welcome to History Bites. I'm Rick Green. A few years ago, an Iraqi military strongman used his armies to invade his neighbors, ruthlessly crushing all opposition. His propaganda writers then worked overtime to make him look good. His name, of course, was Sargon the Great, the ruler of Mesopotamia. That's right, 4,000 years ago, Sargon conquered all the cities in his area and then kind of squashed them together like a K-Tel patty stacker to make the world's first empire. So, Let's go back to 2300 BC, where Sargon the Great is dealing with the most important issue facing any world leader, looking good on television. Next on 2020. The media is full of reports about Sargon, the new king who is breaking more than one rule and ruling more than one city. Tonight, Candy Twinkle takes a hard look into the background of this would-be royal in our piece, Rightful King, or Rightful King. It seems everyone is impressed by Sargon the Great. This conqueror king has led his armies across Mesopotamia, crushing every city in his path. Rumors say he was an abandoned royal baby who made good through a romance with the goddess Ishtar. But we wanted to know what was behind the pomp and the pageantry. What about Sargon the Man? Sargon came to power here in Uruk after defeating our armies in battle. Now he plans to rule not only over Uruk, but also a great many other cities in the area. We asked him about his plans. Sargon, the cities you've conquered read like a Sumerian roadmap. Ur, Kish, Uruk, Lagash, Sippar, and even Larsa. You've beaten every army that went against you. That's right. Why? Why were the wars? the killings, the bloodshed necessary. The city-state paradigm is a thing of the past. That's why when I conquer a city, I have the city walls torn down. It's symbolic of the lowering of trade barriers. It also helps you attack those cities if they rebel. It's a win-win situation. <laughs> Some of your critics have said that this new idea of... Um, an empire? Call? Right, right, empire, yes. That this idea of an empire is crazy. What do you say? Well, I don't know about crazy. Certainly it isn't the sort of thing that could be pulled off by an ordinary man. But I'm no ordinary man. In fact, I was personally chosen for this job by the goddess Ishtar. Who is the love goddess? The goddess of love, yes. Who fell in love with me. And I don't think she would have fallen in love with a crazy guy, do you? Impressive credentials, but are they real? We spoke with Harry Shush. When Sargon worked as a cupbearer, Harry worked under him as a saucer holder. How do you feel about his claims that he had lain with Ishtar? He was always pretty upfront about who he'd lain with, you know, didn't want to keep that to himself. And I heard it all, you know, slave girls, baker's daughter, even my sister Brittany, you know. Didn't really want to hear the details on that one, if you know what I mean. But I never heard nothing about uh, Ishtar or any other gods. Did that strike you as odd? Yeah, well, yeah, sure. You know, if, uh, if it had been me personally and I'd lain with the goddess of love, I'd be bragging about it to everybody, you know. But Sargon, he didn't bring it up till after he was king. Like I say, he was pretty upfront about who he'd lain with. That's what he was good at, laying and slaying and talking about it. It's so easy, just take a tablet of clay, write your message in cuneiform or a language of your own invention, and bake. Then sandwich it in a clay envelope and seal. For added security, write your message again on the outside of the envelope. The recipient won't even have to open it. Then just bake your envelope and you're ready to send your message. Minerta or Kai? Well, Regis, um, I know that Kai is the goddess of the Earth, so that sounds like a possibility. Um, Okay, Ninurta is the thunderstorm god, so I, I don't think it's him. I know Enlil is the wind god, so I, I don't think it's Enlil. Enki is the manager of the soil, so it could be him. But no, you know, I have two little girls at home and they love Kai, so I, I'm going with D, Kai. All right, so you're saying Kai. 
Is that your final answer, Zob? No, Regis. Uh, that's my provisional answer. Um, uh, okay, I'm gonna think this through again. Go right ahead, Zob. Okay. Um, Kai is the Earth goddess, sure. But, but the question says, God, not goddess. The cuneiform kit has thousands of uses. Record your possessions, write contracts, keep in touch with family, or just make lists of the kings. The famous Tower of Babel was supposed to have been in southern Mesopotamia. According to the Old Testament, when God saw humans building a tower that would reach to heaven, he stopped everything by causing the workers to all speak different languages. The start of a long-standing tradition of architects, engineers, and contractors who just can't seem to communicate. The Tower of Babel may be a myth, but the Mesopotamians did have language problems. Okay, I, I don't get it, because we're, we're in the poor, right? And, and this city already has a king. But Sargon, he's in Akkad, and he's king of Akkad, but now he's king of Nippur. But he's still out there in Akkad. But I just want to say that we have had it up to here with Sargon's government cutbacks. Cut necks are bad enough, but cutbacks, the way their spines stick out, it's just gross. I understand that you can't have good administration and a strong empire without fear of horrible punishment. But come on. Okay, so he's king of, of like two places, but he's not, he he's not here where he's king, but he's out in Akkad where he, but there's two. Oh, I just can't wrap my head around it. What's up? We just want to say, like, we are so tired of people hitting on our friend Sheila. Right. It's because, like, they, they come over and they're like, I'm so great, I have a chariot, and, like, uh, she's almost, like, engaged, right? Yeah, right. And, like, the, the bride price, Yeah, right? like, they've already paid, like, the bride price, right? Yeah. But they don't even think to ask, because they're like, I'm so great, I have a chariot, I have a beard and a spear, and, like, we're like, so what? Yeah, you know, like, the spear is in a relationship, okay? We now return to the Tom Act Green Show. Once in her lifetime, every woman must do her sacred duty. She must go down to the temple and have sex with the first stranger who throws money at her. I think the rest of us should be grateful for those women. But I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to help her do her job. Will you have sex with me, sir? Sir, would you like to have sex with me? Oh, you're one. Hello, sir. We love you long time. We love you long time. Sir, will you have sex with me, please? Hello? Welcome to the temple. I'm one of today's sacred prostitutes. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> well, Is there anyone you'd like to say hello to, sir? Your wife? Your mother? Your family? performing a sacred duty, and you, sir, are making a mockery of that. No, I'm just helping them by giving them my support. Well, you should be ashamed. And Enki, the soil guy, is also god of bronze workers. So I'm going with A, Enki. Final answer? No, 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 because you know, I'm, I'm not sure that hoes are made of bronze, right? So, okay, Ninurta is the god of the humid thunderstorms of spring, but he's also a lord of the plow, and um, well, that's a lot, like a hoe, so. What brings you to the temple today, sir? Never, never mind what brings me to the temple. I, I'm doing my duty to the god. Would someone have sex with me? Please have sex with me. Please, please, please. Come on. When we come back, Moses wasn't the first to be abandoned in a reed basket. When modern day archeologists began digging in Iraq and they discovered the story of the great Emperor Sargon, they were struck by how familiar it was. It was like a remake of the Moses story, except that Sargon lived about a thousand years earlier. The similarities are amazing. Both Sargon and Moses were military leaders from desert tribes in the same area. They spoke similar languages, and they both had close relationships with their gods, although only Sargon claimed to have slept with his. But the strangest similarity was that, according to the legends, they had both been abandoned as babies in reed baskets. 
But of course, that's not your only claim to kingship. According to palace press releases, you are also the son of a high priestess. Right, a uh, high priestess, who of course would have been from the royal family, which makes me royal. And this woman, this uh, priestess, abandoned you? Yes. As you know, uh, high priestesses aren't supposed to have babies. The rules, right? So she secretly abandoned me at birth, set me floating in the river, in a basket, adrift, like a dead eel. You remember that? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, no. No, not the details exactly, but there are scars. But there are problems with this story, too. Big problems. We spoke with Mary Cavanash, a wise woman in Kish. You are a wise woman now. What was your job for 35 years? I was a midwife. So you assisted with the births of babies? That's right. And a good many of them survived, too. Do you remember assisting with any births at the home of Aki, the water drawer? Oh, indeed I do. I helped with the birth of their two little girls and their little boy. Oh, hold on. Are, are we talking about the same little boy who is now king? That's him. So, wait, let me, let me get this straight. Was the mother of Sargon a high priestess, a member of the royal family, or was she the ordinary wife of a common water drawer? Oh, she was Aki's wife. <laughs> Oh, she was a strong and healthy girl, yeah, but ordinary as you can imagine. Store a blue streak during the delivery. <laughs> oh, ye gods, she says. You <coughs> how could you do this to me, she says. You <coughs> Stick your b up your yeah, that's a new one on me. I hadn't heard that one before. <laughs> okay, and I've always liked the guy with the eagle wings and lion head and all, so okay, okay, all right. My answer is C, Ninurta. I hope you're with me, Ninurta. <laughs> so, you're saying Ninurta. Is that your final answer's up? <sighs> oh boy, okay, now you got me wondering. <laughs> yes, I, no, no, I, I, I okay, I, I, I'd like to change my answer again. Uh, Sorry, I'm wasting so much of your time here. Well, that's okay. The more time you take, the less money we give away. Oh, somebody have sex with me. <laughs> How long have you been here? <laughs> How long? That's a long time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Why don't we have sex with each other? <laughs> then we can both leave. With the examination complete, Frank, the head of Sipu, oh, goes out to talk to the parents. Yes. I'm Frank Lumlush. I'm the Hasepu who's looking after your son. Uh, oh, doctor, right. how is he? He's, he's great, he's great. Uh, he has a bit of jaundice. The yellow disease. That's right, the yellow okay. disease. It's, uh, we caught it quickly though, so uh, it, that's good. Um, and we're giving him some yellow medicine, yes, some yellow good. herbs and roots, so that should good. alleviate the symptoms, and he's in stable condition. Oh, okay. That's good. Yes. That's good. We should have a, a little talk, um, because usually in these cases, we like to know what's causing the disease, and it could be one of many things. You know, he may have committed some small sin, or perhaps he skipped some part of his ritual. Uh, but in, in this case, uh, we're thinking that it may be uh, a bit of demon possession. Oh my on. god, demon possession! Well, that's that's my opinion. Oh, no, 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 no. I think the best thing that we can do for little Willie right now is to perform a full exorcism. Oh, no, no. Um. What, what are his chances? Well, of course, that's always up to the gods, but um, 
<laughs> no, I have done some tests. Uh-huh. On the way here, I saw a white pig. Okay. So that is an excellent omen, yes. White, that's good. And, and I just checked outside right now, several other pigs were lifting their tails. <laughs> I'm very optimistic. <laughs> you know, the weather god Enlil gives you so much. Sunshine to stroll in, wind to cool you, rain for your crops that you eat that save you from starvation. Yes, I said from starvation. Enlil gives you life. But have you ever given anything back to Enlil? Isn't it time you did? Call the number at the bottom of the screen, Frez. Make us an offering. Perhaps you are angry with Enlil. Oh, I've heard many tales of woe. Farmers who beat their breasts and say, oh, our crops are no good, the land is dry, the insects eat our grain, our children are hungry. <laughs> we hate Enlil. But I say, you sinners, you have turned your back on Enlil, and now you are paying the price. Expect not thy God to run after thee like a dog. Make your peace with the weather god. Make us an offering. Call the number below. Wait, are you a woman or what? <laughs> I'm just doing this to support women. How about it? I'll give you one piece of silver, you give me one piece of silver, and we can both leave. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Is it my legs? Are they too bony? I wasn't so successful as a prostitute, but I still have my one sacrifice to make to the gods. One sheep. I'm not quite sure it's dead. I better make sure. And after that, Sargon, you became cup bearer to the King of Kish? There's nothing like bearing the Kish King cup. Cushy job. Oh yeah, Kish is cushy. And well paid. Love that Kish cash. Kish? But you went from carrying out a cup to carrying out a coup. You make it uh, sound like it wasn't preordained. No, I was divinely ordained to be king. It was the will of Ishtar. But that's not the way others tell it. We spoke to Harry Shush. He was always going on about how much he hated the king. Well, he hated the king? Yeah, yeah, he said that he could do a better job than that and that uh, cup bearing was way harder than king. So wait, what you're saying is that Sargon never gave the proper respect to our princes and kings? Yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying, but he kept good care of that cup, though. Coming up, Sargon's empire strikes back. When my friend Duncan suggested that we should do an episode about Sargon, I said, oh, that was a great Star Trek episode with the white steer being Captain Kirk. And, and then Duncan, patiently explained that Sargon the Great is remembered as the man who made the world's first real empire. And I said, oh, Sargon. Oh, yeah. In the Mesopotamia of 2300 BC, his empire was held together by his strong hand, his strong armies, and a support staff of spin scribes who gave Sargon his aura of infallibility, because the people who really got things done were the gods. Now, Sargon, you claim to be the rightful king. You say the great goddess Ishtar told you that you were the rightful king. You say that you were of royal blood, which makes you a rightful king. And now you've named yourself Sargon, which means rightful king. Do you think you're overdoing it? Oh, no, never. I just want people to be really clear about how I really am the rightful king. I even had this bracelet made up. It's got rightful king engraved there on the front. And here on the back, it says I really am. And I had this t-shirt made up. Perfect fit too, which is a sign. So these rumors about how you've bluffed your way to the top, lied about your credentials, that you're just the kid of Aki, the water drawer? <laughs> Pure nonsense. No, dad just looked after me. Uh, Aki just looked after me for a while, that's all. Until he realized I was Sargon the rightful king. See, it just trips off the tongue. Have you already made your pledge? Is the weather still bad? 
Perhaps you have been sinful in his sight. Did you invoke the God's name while holding a rake? Did you take a drink from a cup of unbaked clay? Did you break reeds in the cane break? Did you befoul the river with the urinary fluids of your body? Then show Enlil you are sorry. Call the number, make an offering. We tried to talk to Sargon about these accusations, but he wouldn't speak with us. So we are here, waiting in the chariot park outside his palace. Here he comes now. Sargon, Sargon, do you know a scribe by the name of Atra Batra? I don't know him, excuse me. He says that you paid him to make up your life story. All Have right, you been I'm lying to me? as much as I'm gonna take from you people. people. What are you hiding? No! 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 There you have it. If there were any doubts before, there are none now. Sargon is our rightful king. That is so true, Barbara. After all, who else but a rightful king would be able to get away with murder? No one. The proof is in the pudding. And in putting people to death. <laughs> when we return, John Staffel on the information age. Scribes are recording information on quay tablets, but with libraries of quay tablets piling up, are we reaching information overworld? Sargon the Great maintained his extraordinary empire until his death. Then his son, Great Junior, took over, and after a century or so, the whole enterprise kind of fell apart. It lacked the administrative infrastructure to deal with the frequent rebellions and uprisings. But the way Sargon had run things set the tone for generations of rulers to come, using military power to conquer distant regions. What also endured was Mesopotamian writing. 4,000 years later, we can still read about Sargon's conquests, and their writing system gave birth to English, Greek, and Chinese. Hardly surprising that Iraq's Saddam Hussein has often compared himself to Sargon the Great. After all, communicating your image has been important to leaders throughout history and history bites. Oh, I'm, I'm just making a sacrifice to the gods. Well, sir, that is enough. I have to make sure it's dead. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the temple. Not until I make sure it's been killed properly, sir. 